Hi, in this video I'm going to show you the basics of creating a simple animation in Animate CC. I'm going to create a new ActionScript document. ActionScript is the programming language associated with Animate CC, so if I wanted to make interactive elements or make a game or something complicated within Animate CC, I would use ActionScript to do it, but I'm just doing a simple animation. So even though I'm creating a new ActionScript 3 document, I'm not really going to use the ActionScript part of it. I've got my window, I'll just go to View and fill the stage, fit to window, sorry. Uh, the way uh, Animate draws objects is slightly different to a lot of other programs you might have used. So in Animate, if I draw a shape with an outline, so if I draw a rectangle and then I draw another one. In most programs, I've got two rectangles there, but in this, what it does is they interact with each other. So you can see this, when I drew this one, it cut a bit out of that one. And you can see the outlines are separate, even diff different parts of the line are separate to each other. Uh, you don't necessarily want it to do that. To not have it that way, the first time you draw a object, you'll have this object drawing button here. Just click on that, or just click on J on your keyboard, switch it on and off. Um, what that will do is it will make the objects how you behave like you they would in another vector-based program. So you can see those shapes are uh, attached to each other now. The, um, they don't damage each other and the outline is attached to the shape. Generally speaking, that's how, what I, how I would prefer it behave. So that's why I switched that on. You have layers in Animate like you do in Photoshop or Illustrator. And layers are like having your drawing on layers of cellophane. So if you look at it from the top, it looks like a single image, um, but really it's a whole lot of separate images. Uh, everything that moves in Animate needs to be in its own layer. So you end up with lots of layers. So you really need to name your layers in um, Animate. Like So in Photoshop, I don't tend to name my layers unless I'm doing something super complicated. But if I'm doing something in Animate, I do. The other reason why I do it is because there's no real preview. Like this little thing doesn't really show you what what the layer is, whereas in Photoshop it does, so it's easier to work out what different parts of your um, picture are, but in this it doesn't do that, so you need to name it so that you know what's what. I'm going to just draw some ground in, I don't want an outline for my ground, I'll draw some rectangle to represent the ground. I'm, basically what I'm going to do is a simple an a ball bouncing animation. I'm going to show you a couple different ways, or well, three different ways of making things move, uh, starting with the sort of more old-fashioned way of doing it. I'm going to make a new layer called a sky. And I'll draw some sky in. And just to be fancy, I'm going to draw some clouds in as well. So I'm going to do a stroke. I don't really need to do this, I'm just being showing off a bit. There's a cloud. That's not a great cloud. <laughs> That'll do though. Yeah, yeah, the idea. Just a background basically. Uh, because I'm not going to draw on these layers again, I will lock them. Lock, what locking them will do is it will stop me from accidentally drawing on the wrong layer, which is something you'll do a lot. I, do, I still do it all the time, um, and which is a problem because, as I said before, anything that moves has to be in its own layer. So if you draw on the wrong layer, it causes problems. I'm going to create a new layer and call that red ball, because I'm going to put a red ball on that layer. And I want the ground to be on the top. So if I drag um, that to the top, then it'll be on the top. It draws from the top to bottom, so the ground is going to go on, on top of anything below it. Uh, if I try to draw the ball now, I uh, don't want an outline, I want it to be red. You'll see that it has a little cross saying that I, I'm not allowed to draw. That's because I'm on the ground layer. If I go on the ball layer, they don't let me draw it. I'm holding shift on the keyboard uh, to keep it as a circle so it doesn't go to an ellipse. And I'll draw my ball. I'm going to click on the selection tool and then select that ball. And then I need to go to Modify and Convert to Symbol. Anything that moves um, has to be a symbol. So you have to go to Modify, Convert to Symbol. Uh, if you're doing something simple, you don't really need to name it. You don't end up with 100 symbols, but um, I'm going to name it. Uh, you have your frames down here. So this is the first frame I can, and a scrubber to move along. Because I only have the one frame, I can't move it. Uh, you also have the time it will take to go through those frames. If so, if I look here, it says 24 frames per second. So in, it takes one second to go through 24 frames. So if you look at 24 seconds, that's one second, whereas 48 
um, frames is two seconds and so on. You can change that rate. So a cheap sort of animation would be like 12 frames per second. Um, 24 frames per second is movie quality. That's how fast film goes. Uh, TV is generally 25 like video. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at 24. But if you want it to have be higher or lower, uh, you can certainly do that. Uh, you've got if you want to create some more frames, I'm going to you can right click. So I'm going to right click on and click on insert frame. Now I can move the scrubber. You can see that um, the ground exists in all the frames, but the ball and the sky only exist on the first frame. So I need to right click again, insert frame. To, so now the sky exists. For the ball, the ball is going to change, so I need to um, put in a keyframe. So not just not an ordinary frame, I want a keyframe that's telling the computer that something's changing in this frame. And I didn't go, I probably wanted it further along, so I'm just going to whack in one or two extra frames. To I should have put it further along in the animation. Uh, Alright, so what I'm going to do is move that ball. I want it to move and hit the ground. You can see it locks to it sits to be directly under it so you don't have to be perfect it, it will help you and you can see why I put the ground on top it sort of makes the ball look like it's squishing into it I'm going to put another keyframe in and then another one I put those three in because again I'm just being fancy you wouldn't really need to do that um, I'm going to use this transform and I can have the ball squish in the middle frame so it's squishing and I'm going to put a keyframe right at the end I'm going to use the onion skin. These buttons are different forms of onion skin. These two here, sorry. I'm going to switch this one on. What that does is it shows you previous frames. In this case, all these frames are identical, so it's not really showing me anything. But if I drag that out, that blue little dot, it'll show me where that ball was, and you can see where it's squishing. That's handy because I want that ball to go close to where it started, but not quite to where it started. Um, so that's handy. I'll just switch that back off again. And now if I go to Control, Test Movie, I can see my animation. And it's pretty dodgy, it's just jumping from one spot to the other, but it, it is moving. If I want it to be smooth, in, in the in between the keyframes, if I right click, click on uh, Classic Tween. It's called Classic because this is this way of animating is kind of the old-fashioned way of doing animation within Animate. I am going to show you the mo more modern way, uh, but for this particular um, example, this is probably the easier way of doing it. Create Classic Tween, and what that does is it puts the in-between frames for me. So I'll do the same in this gap. Insert, oh, sorry, create classic tween. So now if I test the movie, uh, control, test movie, test, sorry, um, it's a nice smooth animation. If I want to put sound in, all I need to do is, uh, I can actually put sound in these layers, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend making a, a layer specifically for sound. Don't have to call it sound, but I'm calling it sound. I'm going to put a keyframe in where I want the sound to be. Uh, and then I will uh, import the sound. I'm going to do it to the library, but you could do it to the stage if you wanted to. And I have this boing sound. Open it. And then if I go to the library, I can drag this onto the stage. Instinctively, I would think you'd put it there, but that's not what you do. I would, um, you want to put it on the stage. And then you've got your sound in as well. So if I test it now, control test. I said it's a bit glitchy the first one, but it's up, um, right now. If it's a long sound, this one's because it's short, it's fine. It, um, uh, it doesn't repeat. But if you have a, a very long, like a sound that's longer than the length of the animation, you might need to put another keyframe in the end. Keyframe, and then in that keyframe, uh, change the sync so get it to stop playing and that'll stop it repeating but in this particular case it doesn't matter because the the animation the sound is shorter than the animation uh all right so another way of animating if i just make a new layer i'm going to call this one blue ball and i am weirdly enough going to draw a blue ball i'm actually drawing this off to um, out of the way where I actually want it to move and I'll show you why later. So again, because this is moving, I need to select that ball and go to modify, convert to simple. I'll name it, but I don't really need to. Uh, and what I'm going to do in this is right click on this layer and click on, oops, sorry, 
my window's too small. Uh, classic motion guide. So I'm going down here and down the bottom of this list where you can't see I'm going. Sorry, I had to choose the size of a window. Um, there's an option that says add classic motion guide. Um, again, it's called classic because it's kind of an old fashioned way of doing it. So I'm going to click on that. It's made this guide layer here. And what that means is I can go on this layer, select a drawing tool, so I'm going to click the pencil, might make that stroke a bit smaller because it's a bit ridiculously big at the moment. Um, yeah, that's all good. And I'm going to draw what I want that, that ball to do. So I want it to bounce and bounce and then go off the screen like that. Because it's moving, this ball, it needs to have keyframes. So I'm going to right click on the end of the blue ball and insert, insert keyframe. And then what I can do now is I can grab that use the selection tool, grab that ball by the circle and it will want to stick on that line, see how it likes it. Because I'm on the last frame I'm going to put it at the end, stick it on the end of that. Now I'll go to the first frame, go by the little circle, stick it on the beginning and then right click again because it's the old fashioned way of animating I will click classic twin and you'll see it's made those in between frames for me, it's following that line. And that line is invisible when you actually watch the movie, so control test, that's good, it's bouncing like that. Uh, the final way of making, well there's, you can do animations frame by frame if you really want to do something super complicated, but the more modern way of animating, the last way, which I'm showing you last, what colour should we make this ball? Let's go purple. I shall make it a square. Click on the shape. Do I want an outline? I don't want an outline. And we'll make it purple. Uh, and I'll draw a square. There we go, there's my square. The more modern way of animating, um, which is probably easier for a lot of things, um, but not these specific things, like if you want to hold a, an exact complicated path, then that guide layer I find is the easier way of doing it. And if you want this one, it was easier to do the old fashioned way because I was having a couple of cell animations. But if you just want something to simply move, then the way to do it is to right click in the layer of the object and create motion tween. And what that will, whoops, uh, sorry, what that's doing, saying now is saying, um, because I'm going to animate something, it's saying that needs to be a um, symbol. Do you want to convert it to a symbol? Um, and yes, I do. It didn't give me the opportunity to name it, but again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if I, the old fashioned way, if I did that, it wouldn't kick up a fuss that I hadn't created, um, turned that into a symbol. So when you're doing it, these the first ways I showed you how to animate things. You have to remember to turn it into a symbol. But if you're doing it this way, you don't. So it's an easier way of doing it. And what the motion um, tween will do is I can go anywhere in this on the scrubber and then move that shape, and it will automatically tween it for me. I don't have to do anything. So it's it's kind of a more um, an easy way of animating something. And I can just like if I want to be fancy, I can curve that line, make it look a bit more smooth. Uh, you can even go back on this one, this one here. You can even rotate it. Uh, and it will work out the in between bits for you for that as well. And uh, what have we done? Might move it back to where it started, just to be. Uh, it looks about right. Oh, okay. Well, that'll do. You get the idea. I could could have done that better, but who cares? Uh, and then if I go to Control Test, it'll follow that path. So it is motion is a, probably a simpler way of, do, of doing a lot of animations. There was a third one that you might have noticed. If I put a shape in, uh, called uh, Shape Tween. And that's when you want to have something morph from one thing to another, but I'm not going to bother showing to that. It's kind of a, it's not something that comes up that often. Anywho, that's the basics of creating an animation in Animate.